The outer world follows the inner world is a concept I talk about a lot on this channel that the physical world, the physical existence that you see with our five senses is actually something that is reflected via cultivating the inner world of mind and energy. However, this can lead to many questions and rightfully so, one of the most common being, well, how long does it take my physical world to start matching the inner world that I am cultivating? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to change your identity at the cellular level, which causes the physical stuff to start flying in. I'll also go over why this is, how long it takes, and how you can start the process today. Ultimately, when you learn how to do it, and you do this in the proper way in order, massive shifts and changes can occur in your life very, very shortly. And you may even be blown away when I give you how long it takes and how to do it with how quick it actually can be, again, when you do this correctly. And this is something ultimately that the ancients, masters of past and present, secret societies have known about for just thousands of years, probably even longer, how to influence themselves in the inner world and even at the cellular level so that things in the physical come flying in. And you're gonna start learning how to do that yourself today. So the first thing we need to do just really quick is go over the law that allows for this idea of the outer world following the inner world to work. Why is that the case? Well, it's down to what's actually the primary law of the universe, which is why it's so crucial to understand this. And that is the law of balance and harmony. And we're gonna dive a little bit more into how this operates and again, how you can use this to essentially create your own reality in the ways that you want. I've gone over in other videos where I dive even deeper, but I'm gonna give you just a brief idea of how this works. Essentially, that which is cultivated within the inner world of your mind and the energy, you can think of it like an inner garden, will have to reproduce its like kind in the outer world. It's a similar to the mirror principle if you understand that concept, where what's going on within you will eventually have to be reflected without you. So essentially, when something is out of balance, life applies counterbalancing forces in order to rebalance whatever it is. This can take many forms and actually happens on all planes of existence. So not just the physical, but the mental, the energetic, and so on. And so the reason why our thoughts and our emotion or energy in motion are so important and so influential in our lives, in the quality of our lives and what we bring about is because of the law of balance. And I'm gonna explain why it is, why our thoughts are so crucial, why the energy attached to those thoughts or the energy we find ourselves in most of the time is so crucial and why we talk about that so often. It's because of how this law operates in your life. To make it pretty brief for now, when you cultivate, let's say, positive feelings and emotions within you in your inner world most of the time, those will have to be reproduced in the outer world over time. When you create that energy within you and it grows more and more and more powerful, it will essentially manifest. But the opposite is true as well. If you're like most people who are typically in a negative loop or they're thinking negatively and they're building up a ball of energy as well, but that of negative negativity, it will start to manifest its like kind in the physical. This is why almost every time that you meet someone who is fairly negative, or maybe there have been times in your life where you've been this way, they seem to have a litany of problems. They seem to have a laundry list of just everything that's going wrong in their life. There seems to be so much chaos and things are falling apart and so on where someone who has genuinely cultivated more of those positive emotions within their inner world, within their mind, have cultivated more of those positive thoughts are usually living lives of abundance and love and appreciation and prosperity and so on. Why? Because the outer world follows the inner world through the law of balance and this applies to every single person. There is no exception to this rule. Now, what I wanna go over next is how you can actually change your identity, change yourself at the cellular level in order to start bringing about that which you actually want in your life. And I think you're gonna really enjoy this and hopefully really appreciate how powerful this can be. And this is how we're going to use the law of balance in our favor in order to start having certain things flying in. This is what we help people do. And I'm gonna give you some of the roadmap on how to do this yourself. Now, when you're experiencing a certain emotion, typically it's the byproduct of certain thoughts you've been having. 
You know, you might think an angry thought and bada bing, bada boom, you start feeling angry. In fact, next time you notice you're in a more negative emotion, you can test this out for yourself. Just pause and monitor what you're thinking about. You're going to find that you're probably thinking about something that's fairly negative as well, and it's activating that emotion. Essentially, our emotions are an amazing guide to let us know what we're thinking about. When we feel good, it usually means we're on course to actually bring about what it is we want. But when we feel bad or negatively, it's usually because we are thinking negative thoughts. And so I would encourage you to use your emotional guidance system to become aware of what you're thinking about. So every thought you are thinking starts to produce a chemical in you through these feelings. Again, like I mentioned, when you have angry thoughts, how do you feel? You feel pretty angry. Now the cells that are in your body are constantly adapting to the feelings that you're giving it, to the emotions that you are allowing to course through your body on a consistent basis. And so if you're always in, say, anger, they are going to adapt to an angry environment. You see, cells essentially have skin around them called receptor sites that essentially adapts to the weather you are consistently giving them. And the weather is simply the biochemical climate that your thoughts are producing. So what weather are you producing inside the body for your cells to adapt to? To keep it very simple, positive emotions, positive thoughts are creating, let's say, a sunny, pleasant climate for your cells, while negative thoughts are producing, you know, harsher environments like rain and snow and bitter cold. So your cells essentially are going to adapt to the biochemical climate that you consistently produce over time. Now here's where the magic can happen. Because when you start to produce a new biochemical climate, a new weather pattern for your cells to adapt to, so let's say you were negative and now you're producing a sunny climate. You're producing a more sunny, positive climate, biochemical climate for your cells because you're thinking positively, feeling positively most of the time. What ends up happening is counterbalancing forces in the universe become activated because you're now actually out of balance. Because of your newly adapted cells, if you stick with this long enough, these forces have to come in and again adhere to the law of balance and harmony. Now, how are these balancing forces going to be applied? Well, there's actually only two things pretty much that can happen when you do this. So remember, you had a, let's say if it was a more negative biochemical climate for your cells, that was normal and everything was balanced and you probably saw similar things in your outer world that matched that but now you've changed the climate. And so your cells have changed, they've adapted to this new climate, but your outer world hasn't adapted yet because it's slower. So one of two things are gonna happen. Either your physical world by law is going to have to change to match your cells, to match your new inner world. It's going to have to bring you people and opportunities and circumstances and events that you can act upon in order to match the new biochemical climate that your cells have adapted to. The second way it balances is you revert back to the old climate so that it matches your current physical circumstances, which at that point are still going to be more from the old climate or what we can consider negative. Those are the only two ways to balance out. And guess what? The universe doesn't care which way it balances out. It is just concerned with balancing it out. And so if you stick with it long enough, you stick to that biochemical climate, you keep feeding your cells that so they adapt to that environment, your physical will begin to change to match that. What happens with most people is they maybe do this for a little bit. They don't have guidance or coaching or they don't have something that you know, keeps them stuck with it. So when something kind of difficult comes in, they kind of back off and then the results go back down. But if you don't do that, you stay in the chaos, you stay calm in the storm. The storm dissipates and suddenly a new physical environment has been created because your cells stayed in that new adapted uh, weather or in that new uh, biochemical climate instead of you reverting back to a negative one. So essentially, if you maintain a new inner climate for long enough and don't stop when the balancing forces come in, you can literally have universal forces come in and shift your reality in massive positive ways. Now the big question is, how long does this take? Surely this takes years. Surely this is going to take a really long time. And I don't got that time. I got too busy being negative. I don't have time to go do this. How long does it take? Now with the right focus, guidance, persistence, uh, and practice, you can actually have this occur in dramatic ways in as little as six to eight 
weeks. If you have where you're doing this and you're, you're creating that biochemical climate for your cells and you stick with it and if you fall off the horse you just get right back on pretty quickly and you know you, you just get really good at this, six to eight weeks leads to dramatic changes in the physical world and in fact there's even a term for it called the quantum to Newtonian transition point which says that six to eight weeks of focused particle flow leads to dramatic results in the physical world, meaning you will see some already before those six to eight weeks, but six to eight weeks of really focusing on this leads to dramatic results that you may have never even imagined could happen. That's, as sh that's how little it can take or how uh, little time it can take when you get this right. Essentially, your job is going to be to put yourself out of balance so your cells are living in the place and time where your goal has already happened and then you have to just allow the physical to catch up through the law of balance and balancing forces. All right, so now I'm going to go over some of the first steps to getting this to work for yourself in your own life. However, if you don't want to leave this up to chance and trial and error and you want to go beyond just the first steps and basically get the whole roadmap, then I really recommend that you check out our reality creation program called EMF. And we have helped thousands of people embody these universal laws so that they are getting insane results quickly and over time forever as we help them to form the habits to use these principles for the rest of their lives. Now, if you want to learn how to start getting results uh, you have only ever dreamed of up until now or take this to a whole new level for yourself, you can check out the first link in my description where I have a free training for you along with a case study where you'll learn if EMF is even something that's going to work for you, but it's worked for so many and you're going to start seeing some of those results that they've gone through on that page as well. Now, like I mentioned earlier, your emotions and thoughts go towards creating the biochemical climate for your cells in the body. And so your thoughts and emotions are playing in a massive uh, part in creating your reality. So ultimately, if you're someone who is a constant negative thinker, stinking thinking, as I think Zig Ziglar would say, then this is something that needs to be addressed or you're just never going to be able to create in the ways that you want. Now, the good news is even if you are someone who thinks more negatively, this can be changed. Now, again, the way to tune in to how you are thinking is your emotional state. How are you feeling? If you are feeling negative most of the time, your thoughts are most likely negative. And so use your emotional guidance system to your advantage throughout the day to stop and pause and just become aware of what you're thinking about. This is why in EMF, mastering emotions is one of our core modules because it just plays such a big part in your life. And when you begin to master your emotions, you begin to master your world and you begin to intentionally create your biochemical climate. And so I'm gonna give you one simple tool here that you can start to use in order to neutralize these negative emotions and to change your thinking in the moment. So if you're feeling a negative emotion, which means you're most likely thinking negative thoughts, there's a four step process you can do and it takes about a minute or two in order to change this so that you're not creating a bigger negative energy ball or continuing to subject your cells to a negative biochemical climate, which again is gonna produce negative results for you or just results that are in line with that climate. So here's what you can do. First up, you gotta catch yourself and wake up. You have to notice that you are acting unconsciously and that you're caught in a bit of a pattern right now. Simply snap yourself out of it so you can become present and start breaking this pattern. So essentially wake up, get in the moment, become aware. And the more you do this, the more you actually are going to stop this pattern from playing out. When you allow it to play out without any resistance, a neural pathway is essentially being strengthened that makes it even more and more unconscious and automatic. So we need to snap ourselves out of it first and foremost. The second thing to do is to locate where in the body it is and what it actually is. So identify what the emotion is. Is it anger? Is it guilt? Is it something similar? Is it fear? And then really feel out in your body, is there a certain location in the body where you are feeling it? Thirdly, you want to disidentify yourself with the emotion. One thing that sends us for a negative loop is we start labeling ourselves as the thing. You know, that I am angry, which is might as well say I am anger, or I am guilty, I am guilt. You know, we want to disassociate this as not something that you are or is a part of you, but something that has just latched onto you, something that you are experiencing, right? So instead of, let's say it's anger, I would say, you know, I am David McEwen experiencing the emotion of anger 
anger. And you may find immediately when you disidentify with it, disassociate with the emotion, that you already feel a little bit better because this is not something that you are. It's just something that you're experiencing. And lastly, you're just going to observe and allow. Now that you've disidentified with this emotion, it's going to be a lot easier to do this, to just watch something that isn't you and realize like, oh, this isn't me. I'm going to allow it. You know, this is not something I'm going to banish or try and force away because I can't control something that's not me, but I'm just gonna allow it and observe it. And you're literally just going to observe the emotion. You might find it's in one part of your body and then it starts to move. And just allow it to move wherever it moves and allow it to essentially move out of your body, which it will do eventually if you do this correctly, and then just allow that to happen. And you may feel a weight kind of lifted off of you when this happens. You may feel that you feel lighter. But what you're also gonna notice is that a lot of the thoughts that are usually associated with this emotion are no longer there playing in your mind. So allow that emotion to just leave on its own accord. And what's great is when you get good at this, or even in the beginning, you'll notice that it takes about 60 to 90 seconds, or even quicker when you get better, for this emotion to leave. And in fact, if you allow and observe the emotion, it cannot stay in the body for longer than that unless you are resisting. No emotion can survive in the body unresisted for longer than 60 to 90 seconds. And so you are 60 to 90 seconds away from that anger, from that frustration, from that guilt or whatever you're kind of spiraling in in the moment from being released in that moment and getting you back to center so you can now intentionally choose what you want to think about and what you want to feel. Now, there are many other tools that I could give you in order to help you with this, but what I wanna do instead is to give you something that is going to help you reprogram your subconscious mind in this video here. It is a full guide on how to do so, and when you really uproot many of the beliefs and identities that are no longer serving you, that's when we can start putting in the thoughts and emotions that create the biochemical climate you really want, and so reprogramming your subconscious mind is what I would recommend you go do next because it's gonna go so far in actually helping you to create your reality.